What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. It's Monday morning. It's early. I'm still not fully awake, but we are bringing you the Spanish League attackers and we've got Bellingham, we've got Morata and we've got Kubo. We've got a very unique version of Bellingham and we're going to focus on him and a couple of others, right? The only other two players we're going to focus on apart from Kubo, Morata and Bellingham, which are the showtime, are going to be Felix and Williams, right? The rest of the players, lads, right? I mean, we can say this all you want, right? All of these players that you see here are going to be average-based players, depending on where your squad is at, right? If you were starting downloading the game yesterday or the day before or last week and you haven't really played this game that much, right? You are going to have a spin at these if you do decide to spin for these. And anyone that you really get, even the standard cards, right? If you don't have a fairly decent squad, any of the standard cards are going to be an upgrade for you. You just have to train them up, right? Obviously, in your pursuit of Bellingham to build your squad around or whatever, but if you're like me and you've been playing for a while, these cards really are newcomer-ish cards. They're not really cards that interest me because of the stack squad that I have. So it's all about perspective, man. But I would say that Bellingham and Kubo are definitely players to check out in more detail, which we'll have a look at. But first, we will take a look at Williams and Felix before we get on to the tree showtime, right? So the thing I like about Williams, lads, is that he's a different base player than you might be used to playing with if you do spin for him. If you're looking for Bellingham and you do actually spin for him, he's got flip-flap, chip shot control, long-range shooting, first-time shot. He's really, really fast. How I would train him up would be quite different. Um, I would probably train him up like this, right? So there's how I would go. If you've missed my Anchorman and Destroyer video, I also recommend you check that out. But this is the Williams that I would train up. So 8 into shooting, 10 into dribbling, 4 into lower body, and 14 into dexterity. And then obviously here, I'll hide my screen, lads, actually, because I always make this mistake. But you can see there with his speed and acceleration is going to be outrageous. 90 dribbling, 82 balance. Uh, he's fairly tall. He's 186 cm. He's strong as well with that physical contact over 70. But that acceleration and offensive awareness are brilliant. The finishing at 80 is a bit of a problem, though. That's the only thing, <coughs> excuse me, that's the only thing with him, right? Now, we'll also take a look at Felix, uh, João Felix, who has had a kind of a strange career, lads, club wise, right? But he seems to have found his form a little bit now. Um, and obviously, one of the most exciting players to watch on the pitch as well. Uh, double touch soul control he doesn't have flip flap but he has one touch pass and true passing which i like and he also has very high balance dribbling ball control type possession straight off the rip now they seem to have a running team with these spanish league attackers which all of the players the main guys are able to shoot pass dribble right and you'll see that with bellingham in the second with kubo as well but this guy is kind of a little bit of a disappointment lads right he only has 26 levels which when you max him out it looks a little something like this right so 82 speed 85 acceleration uh we've popped 10 into passing now you could right you obviously could because he's got one touch pass you could take and uh, survive with only 80 into the low pass you could survive with that because he's more a run and gun rather than kind of like a splitting passer um and he does have enough player skills to kind of like overcome his frailties or weaknesses with the stats right there's no doubt about that and if you wanted to pop four more onto shooting you know but i don't think a lot of people actually shoot out the pitch that often so it's mostly tap-ins if you're playing meta or else if you are playing a little bit of possession or a wide you usually have a target man or one two you know friendly build-up play right and um, we'll do a video on all the different build-up plays there's only about three of them but it might help some people but yeah you could really just kind of like throw the rest into this to have his stats uh pretty much maxed out where i would probably put them right even if you wanted to have one or two more into speed he's looking like a beast there with the 91 balance which is quite decent and of course the ball control all in the 90s as well but yeah not a not an extraordinary card i don't think for this stage in the game i mean if he had 28 or even 30 levels where you could get that finishing up to 80 with the rest of them stats it would be nice because he's got nice player skills right so on to the actual big showtime guys right so these guys actually have a booster i wasn't sure uh were they going to have a booster or not and there was also rumors that bellingham was going to be a free player that this bellingham was going to be a free kind of like celebration player um but i'd say that they're probably smart enough to, re to release a card like this uh which, which we'll get into in a second for bellingham right but these booster cards kind of change how you know how good they're going to be right and it, you have to take that into consideration when you're building the player so Morata, who's somebody that i've always considered as a really kind of slow player he kind of changes a little bit because you know that you're going to be getting a plus two to the boost to his uh finishing and also to his ball control so that's going to be very interesting when we're actually training this guy up the big weakness of Morata, even though he's going to have a really nice pace 
is going to be his positioning and is also going to be, of course, his balance, right? So that's where we need to kind of like fix if we are going to be building up this player. So when I'm training him up, right, this is how we've gone for it. So we've gone four into shooting, we've gone nine into aerial strength, we've gone 13 into dexterity, four into dribbling and seven into lower body and then one into goalkeeper one to get that jump up. Depending on how you play with Morata, I would say that a lot of people are going to play with Morata because he's a goal poacher and he's got that shooting plus two. He also does have aerial superiority and heading with acrobatic finishing. So I do think you need to boost up a little bit of his aerial balance on his aerial threat. Um, that's kind of something that is kind of, you know, for ye. It, it, it depends on how you want to train him up. Some people won't want to train him up early. Some people will want to. But you're going to have 90 finishing. You're going to have offensive awareness, acceleration and physical contact all around the high 80 mark with the boosts. It's a it's a fairly decent card. Lads. It's one of the better cards that they have released, right? But it's still not, in my opinion, a top tier center forward, right? Moving on to Kubo. I think because Kubo can play uh, attack and midfielder, it kind of changes this card, especially with the booster that you're going to have on him, which is very nice to his speed, his balance. It's going to be a really nice card if you are looking at building up this card very effectively, right? Especially when it comes to his... Uh, dribbling stats right which we've kind of trained him up quite nicely here 32 levels that's going to give you about what 60 62 uh, player uh, progression points which we'll get to here very nice card he got ball carrying plus two he's got double touch soul control long range curler shooting first time shot one touch pass and of course pinpoint crossing true passing and outside curler with momentum dribbling so he has got momentum dribbling for a demonic uh right winger right now he can play uh, through the middle as well and up front i definitely think that this guy is romario-esque apart from the physical contact um that's kind of where we're going to go with him right but look at these stats man with the booster right so we're going to have 92 91 and 90 type possession ball control and dribbling we're going to have 90 finishing 91 acceleration and 94 balance it's a really really nice card with those player skills and I definitely do recommend him if you are looking for somebody, and you do spin him if you're looking for somebody a little bit different, right? Especially that he can play all over the pitch. But the pick of him is going to be whole player Bellingham, lads, right? Not only does he have 35 levels, right? He also has a booster to his shooting, which is unbelievable because he already has 84 finishing. Ball control is really good. Kicking power and physical contact is really good. So I think that this is going to be the card that people will want to spin for. Um, and rightly so. Look, Bellingham is one of the most exciting players in the world at the moment. He, he seemingly has everything. Feet, power, pace, balance, everything. And he's banging in goals for fun for Real Madrid. So the first thing that I would look at with Bellingham is his skills. And he has got the three beautiful skills. Uh, double touch, flip flap and ball control for those silky moves, ball roll, um, whatever you call it. So uh, rising shot, long range shooting, first time shot, one touch pass. So this card is essentially really built as an attacking midfielder in the, in the vein of Steven Gerrard or Frank Lampard back in the day. More Gerrard or Scolzi, I suppose, that you'd be getting a lot of shots on target, a lot of stunning shots, a lot of curl shots. He's got everything you could possibly want. Don't try to turn this guy into your defensive option, lads, right? Use another Bellingham for that. Don't waste him on this, in my personal opinion, because when you do actually train him up, right, and you see with the booster, he's going to have kick and power, physical contact, ball control, and finishing. That means you only need to pop a couple into finishing to get 90 with the boost, right? Same for physical contact. You're going to be getting a boost to that and to the kick and power. So I wouldn't worry too much about training him up that way. Now, I would try, if, if it was me, I would potentially try to get either his dribbling up one more um, to get that 90 type possession uh, and the dribbling to 87 or more or else try and get the acceleration up, right? I definitely feel that you need 80 speed with Bellingham for some reason. He does seem to tire quickly even though his stamina is fairly good and he does have fighting spirit. Sometimes I feel like Bellingham feels a bit sluggish after 70 minutes. I don't know if that's just built in or whatever, but this is a phenomenal card, lads. A really, really phenomenal card. I know whole players have been kind of a little bit nerfed but I still feel like that this guy is going to be potentially one of the best attacking midfielders because he's so unique. He's strong. He's physical. He's got fighting spirit from an attacking midfielder. Very competitive. Um, so I do think he's going to be one of the best players. Do I recommend you spin the pack for Bellingham? I don't know if he's worth spinning and going deep. Honestly, lads, I would probably save your coins until the next big update and we see where the direction is going with these coins and cards. Um, but he is a very unique card. So let me know what you guys think. That is the training guide on Bellingham. Let me know if you want me to spin for him and do a review for you guys if you're not. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be back later on. So hope to see you guys in the live stream today. Peace.